This project is called a spinner, and viewing the drawing I can see that it contains circular elements that are all evenly spaced around a center point. Looking at the elements, I can see that from that center point, there is a 15 millimeter hole surrounded by a 30 millimeter circular part of solid material. There are three outside elements consisting of a 30 inch diameter round circular section and a 20 millimeter hole. Now these outer sections are evenly divided around a 50 millimeter diameter circle center. With this information, I'm going to start a new part studio in millimeters. I'll choose sketch and the top work plane and then view normal to the sketch plane. I'm going to use the origin as my center point, so I'll use some center point circles. Starting with the hole in the middle, I'm going to make the first circle coincident to the origin on my sketch plane and set the diameter at 15. Uh, another circle concentric to that using, this, using the same or, uh, origin point, and this will be set at 30. Now I know that the outer sections are in a circular array that is a 50 millimeter circle, so half of that would be 25. I'm going to use a line and make this a construction line starting from the origin, coincident, and I'm going to pull this straight down and create this construction line, and then dimension this at 25 millimeters. I'm going to use the end point of that construction line for my outer circles. So again, I'll use a center point circle from the end point of the line, coincident, and I have a 30 millimeter outer circle and a 20 millimeter inner circle. So with this information, I know that this outer circle is going to be uh, in a pat circular pattern around the outside. To create this pattern, I'll use the pattern tool from my toolbar, choosing circular pattern. The first step is to choose the elements that we want to include in our pattern. You can set the number of elements that will be repeated and the angle around which they will be evenly divided. Right now we're choosing 360. If you drag the indicator here, the arrow, you can change the amount of degrees. Also, it's automatically chosen this center point to be the center of our pattern based on that uh, construction line. So you can see from the icon, I just need to click the left mouse button to accept, and this creates the pattern. With this, I've created all of my sketch entities, but I notice that these outer circles that are created by the pattern are blue, which means they're not fully defined. So they could move around. If I want these to be fully defined, I can use a fix. I'm going to fix the center of this circle to the sketch plane, and that allows them to be fully defined and it won't be moved around later. With this, I'm going to complete the sketch I'll right click and go to isometric view and choose extrude from my feature tools. Now I'm going to choose these outside areas as the regions that I want to extrude. And it has a depth of 10 millimeters. Hit enter to view that, and that looks like the correct pattern that I'm looking for. I'll accept it, and now I need to add the fillets. In this case, I have a five millimeter radius fillet, and it's going to go on these edges where the two circles meet to round out that corner. I will add these one at a time because they're because they're not 
on a continuous surface, tangent propagation won't automatically apply them. And with each of those corners chosen, I can accept that and it builds those fillets. Okay, last I have a one millimeter fillet that goes on all of the edges. In this case, I'll choose fillet. I'm gonna change the radius to one. I'm gonna make sure that tangent propagation is turned on because I'm going to use a window to choose all of these edges. Rather than pick them one at a time, I'm going to go left to right, hold the mouse button down, create a window which chooses all of those outside surfaces and tangent propagation, make sure that they're all continuously filleted. And with that, I finish my spinner.